We're going to look at question 1 of reduction formula. We've been asked to simplify this expression. Sine of 180 plus beta multiplied by tan of 360 plus beta multiplied by cos of beta all divided by cos of 90 minus beta. We can see that it's been written in a form in which we need to use reduction formulae. The first thing you need to do to help you answer this question is set up a Cartesian plane so that you can work out the signs of your different trig ratios in each of the quadrants. Using your cast diagram, remember all your trig ratios are positive in the first quadrant. Sine is positive in the second quadrant. Tan is positive in the third quadrant. And cos is positive in the fourth quadrant. We also know that all the angles in the first quadrant are less than 90 degrees, giving you 90 minus theta. All the angles in the second quadrant are between 90 and 180 degrees, giving you 180 minus theta. And in the third quadrant, your angles are between 180 and 270 degrees. So here, it is 180 degrees plus theta. And the values in the fourth quadrant are between 270 and 360 degrees. So therefore, in the fourth quadrant, all our angles are all 360 degrees minus theta where you remember that theta is an acute angle, so it's always less than 90 degrees. So now that we've got this Cartesian plane drawn up for ourselves, we're going to use it to help us answer and to simplify this question. So in the numerator, we've got sine of 180 degrees plus beta. We first see where that angle falls in the Cartesian plane, and we see that it falls in the third quadrant. So that tells us that sine is negative in the third quadrant. So therefore, to reduce sine of 180 plus beta, our answer is going to be negative sine beta times by tan of 360 plus beta. Now, for 360 plus, remember that you can go around and around your Cartesian plane in what we call a revolution. So therefore, 360 plus beta is going to take you back into the first quadrant. Remember, beta is an acute angle, therefore tan of 360 plus beta is in the first quadrant. So your ratio is going to turn out to be positive because all your trig ratios are positive in the first quadrant. Cos of beta does not need to be reduced, so we leave it like that. That's all divided by cos of 90 minus beta. Remember, with 180 and 360 degrees, when you're dealing with your reduction formulae, your function stays the same. However, when you're dealing with 90 minus an angle, you have to now change the co-ratios. So, for cos of 90 minus beta, we know that 90 minus is in the first quadrant. But cos of 90 minus beta is going to give us the same ratio as sine of beta. So the co-ratio of the cos function is sine. Therefore, cos of 90 minus beta becomes sine of beta. And you can actually check this out for yourself. If you use cos of 90 minus any angle, so for example, if you do cos of 90 minus 10 degrees, you can work out that on your calculator, which is cos of 80 degrees. It's going to give you the same answer as sine of 10 degrees, and this works for any angle in the first quadrant. Right, now we can simplify our fraction by crossing out like expressions. We see that sine beta in the denominator will cancel with sine beta in the numerator, and then we've just got minus tan beta in the numerator times cos beta. Now at this point, you need to remember your identity so that you can change tan of beta to sine of beta over cos beta. All right, so I changed tan of beta to its identity, to its quotient identity, and then we're multiplying that by cos of beta over one. Cos beta in the denominator cancels with the cos beta in the numerator, and you're simply left with negative sine beta. Okay, 
So in this question, we use a combination of the reduction formula and then also trig identities to help us simplify that big fraction to one simple ratio that just has sine of the angle.